One thing I hope I can convince you of by the time this course is completed is that polymers are everywhere. They exist in both natural and man-made forms. Our lives literally depend on them. We wouldn't be able to carry out the basic functions of life without polymers like DNA and proteins. But this is such a big field of study. Uh, how can we get a starting point uh, to understand them? So in this video, we're going to take some first steps to understand what polymers are and what makes them so important and useful. The first thing we need to do when we're talking about any new subject is to define uh, exactly what kind of terminology we're going to use, what kind of language uh, we're going to use to talk about these uh, materials. And it turns out that the word polymer uh, is actually a great starting point to do that uh, because notice that we can divide this into two parts. The first part, poly, means many, and the second part, mer, means things or units or numbers. Based on this, then, we can define a polymer as a molecule that's composed of many repeating units. But what kind of molecule is it? What does it look like? Clearly, it's going to be a big molecule because we said it's composed of many repeated parts, a, a macromolecule, uh, if you will. But is it a blob? Is it a sheet? Is it a cylinder? Well, it turns out that polymers are actually long chain molecules where the repeat units are connected end to end. And we'll learn more about how these chains form uh, later, uh, but for now, we can picture polymers as long chains. So now that we said these are big molecules, how do we quantify how big big is? One way that's conventionally used is to use a parameter called the molecular weight. And this quantity expresses the total molar mass of all the atoms that make up the polymer chain. The units are grams per mole, or sometimes that's called uh, the Dalton. It means the same thing. One Dalton is one gram per mole. So basically, if a chain is composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms, like polyethylene, uh, then we just add up all the carbons and all the hydrogens that make up the chain and calculate uh, the total molar mass, and that gives us the molecular weight uh, of the polymer. Now, the molecular weight tells us how big the molecule is in terms of how much stuff it contains, but it doesn't immediately tell us that this is a chain-like uh, structure as opposed to a blob-like structure doesn't tell us how long the chains are. So there's another parameter we can use uh, that can tell us that, and that's called the degree of polymerization that's often abbreviated by this uh, lowercase n. Now the degree of polymerization is just representative of the number of repeat units of the chain. So some really long polymers can have molecular weights in the hundred thousands or even millions and degrees of polymerization in the thousands or the ten thousands or more. And just to clarify, when we're talking about polymers, usually we're talking about uh, degrees of polymerization that are much greater than 10. Anything shorter than that is a short fragment that's called an oligomer. It's not a lo no longer behaves like a long chain molecule. So we talked about the molecules themselves. We said they're long chain-like structures, but we haven't talked about the repeat units yet. So these are the chemical building blocks, the small molecule building blocks that are repeated many times uh, to form this chain structure, and we call these building blocks monomers. We'll talk more soon about what kinds of monomers produce what kinds of polymers, uh, but for now, just know that these monomers are held together uh, by strong chemical bonds. So these are usually covalent bonds uh, along the backbone that hold these individual units together. There can also be weaker interactions that also play a role in determining the overall structure of the polymer chain, things like hydrogen bonding uh, or van der Waals interactions. Uh, but these usually come into play uh, at, a, at a more detailed level. So for example, we can think about polyethylene. Polyethylene uh, is a typical polymer that, as we'll see soon, is used to make milk jugs and grocery bags. It's a simple linear chain where the monomers are covalently bonded end to end. Biological polymers like DNA and protein uh, are also long chain molecules that are formed by covalent bonds between repeat units. Uh, in the case of DNA, it could be bases, uh, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thiamine. Uh, or in the case of proteins, it's uh, amino acids. Uh, but secondary interactions between the bases of DNA, for example, can fine tune the structure. Uh, so for example, the double helix structure of DNA uh, is a result of hydrogen bonding uh, between different chain strands uh, that are aligned uh, next to each other. In the case of proteins, uh, it's more complicated than that because there's a library of 20 different amino acids. Uh, and since all these different amino acids have different sizes and charges, the way they're arranged 
along the backbone of the chain makes the molecule fold into very precise shapes uh, that have very specific chemical affinities. So now that we know what polymers are and how to talk about them, uh, let's take a closer look at the properties of some common polymers.